All right, so we're in the last part and in this part, we're going to create the uh, commit activity timeline uh, chart. So in that graph, the X axis will store the dates and in the Y axis, I'll have the number of commits made. So let's get started. First, I'm going to start by defining a new section in my code and let's say commit activity timeline and let's add a watch emoji using windows and dot so first i want to see how my commits data frame looks like so if you if you not remember right here we have converted our uh, commits object into a pandas data frame so i'm simply going to type in std.right and commits to see my commits in a table in a data frame so this is how it looks like it has a couple properties and one of those properties is actually called created at so this created at uh, stores when the commit is being made uh, but we only need the date from it i don't think we'll need the time so yeah let's start by defining a new variable called c date so c date will store the date of our commit i'm gonna say from the commits data frame, get the created at column and std.write will equal to cdate now. Okay, so now I get these values. At the moment, these are strings, so I need to convert them into a date time. And pandas has a method for that called pd.toDateTime. So let's convert this into a date time object so now you might think that nothing has changed but in reality now they are date time objects i can get the date from them how do i know that so let's type in dot dt dot date so now i should only see the dates so let's see right only the dates so now as you may see there are duplicates I want to get the unique dates and I already know how to do that using value counts and now I get the unique values and then I'm going to say the reset index. So I'm going to say reset index and yeah. Just like that. So now I know that in the March 9th, I have four commits made. In the 13th, I have four commits made. Uh, in the 19th, I have two, but in the 12th, I have one. So I know that this list is actually not sorted. So I wanna sort the values of this data frame. How do I do that? I'm gonna type in sort underscore values and sort it using the index column, right? So let's type in index and let's save it now our data frame is sorted by the index values 9 12 13 14 19 so now the data frame is sorted uh, first i'm going to create a line chart and then we're going to do a couple tweaks in the data frame okay so let's create a new variable called fig i'm going to call this one as fig and let's create a new chart using px referencing to plotly express then line so this one expects the data frame the x-axis and then the y-axis right so the data frame we are using is called c date and the x-axis is going to be the date so its column is called index at the moment i'm not going to rename it now so let's reference the index and then the y-axis will be the C date uh, created at column. Let's add X right here and save it. And then I'm gonna do st.write and fig. Let's see how that figure looks like. So at the moment I can see in the 9th of March, I have four commits made in the 12th, I have one. In the 13th i have four etc so at the moment what it does is it creates a dot in each date and then connects those dots uh, using a line but i want to see the activity timeline 
if there are no commits made in the March 10th or 11th, I want to see that as well. So how do I do that? So for that, I need to add a new rows of data into my data frame as, for instance, uh, March 10th and 11th, and their values will be equal to zero. In that way, I'll make sure that the line chart created will represent the activity timeline. So let's do that. So first, I'm going to create a new date range, getting the minimum and maximum values out of my data frame. So let's create a date range to fill null dates. So this is going to be the null days variable. And I'm going to create a PD dot date range. So this date range will start from the minimum date to the maximum date. How do I get that? So I'm going to get from the C date, I'm going to get the index column, right? Referencing to the date objects. And then from here, I'm going to get the minimum. So the minimum date will be my start. So where does this date range end is the maximum, right? So let's do the same thing. C date dot get the index column and get the maximum value. So we have defined a new date range. So let's add null days to the table. I'm going to say add null days to table. So I'm going to say C date equals to C date dot First, I'm going to set my index as the index column and let's see how that looks like. So I'm going to add a comment in front of my figure for now. And let's see how our data frame looks like. So now the dates are set as the index, right? Then I'm going to say re-index them using the null days date range, right? So I'm going to say null days. And if the value does not exist, add a zero. I'm going to say fill underscore value equals to zero. So if I save this now, the data frame should look something like this, right? Now the, the index is changed. So we have the zeros added in the 10th and 11th and 12th, etc. But we need to reformat it as well. Okay, so we have edited. Let's reset the index. So I'm going to say C date equals to C date dot reset underscore index. Doing the same thing. Now the index is right here. All right, so let's rename our columns. I'm going to say cdate.columns equals to the first column will be called as date and the second column will be the count. Let's save it. So the first one is date and the second one is count. And this one is rename. And let's redate them. So redate indexed dates. How do I do that? I'm going to get the date column and it's going to be equal to PD dot two underscore date time, date time. So C date referencing to the C date data frame, get their date column and then do DT dot date. That's how we get the date from that object. I'm going to save it now. So now the date column is equal to first we're converting them into a pandas date time object and then getting the date only from them. So now our data frame shows the dates as well as the zero values as well. For instance, in the 11th of March, I have zero commits made. In the 10th, I have zero commits made. All right, so I think now we are good to go. I'm just going to uncomment these guys. Save it. Oops, uh, I think I forgot to change the names. So this one will be date and the second one will be count. Resave it. 
and just like that our activity line chart is working as expected so i'm going to do a couple tweaks to this table as well and i'm going to add markers to show you know each date so i'm going to add a new variable right here called markers it's going to be equal to true so we're going to be able to see these dots in there and let me delete this st.write and instead of st.write what i'm going to say is st.plotly chart use the fig figure and again use container width equals to true all right great we're pretty much done i'm going to do a single thing and i'm going to add a subheader right here as well st.subheader and this is going to be my comet activity time timeline and let's add a watch emoji save it so we can do the same thing and update the layout of this figure as well so i'm simply going to say fig.update underscore layout let's update the layout so what am i going to say the margin equals to a dictionary and it's going to be left equals to two right equals to two top equals to two and bottom bottom equals to two save it yes that's it so we have done it let's see how that looks like in a full page so this is how it looks like i'm just going to refresh my page let me close this once the user sets the speckle server and speckle token uh, all the streams associated with that account will be listed right here and the comments made the number of connectors and contributors etc and this chart i think this one is not working because they're both showing the same thing oh i think we have made a mistake in there so let's take a look at it so i have the collaborator chart it's taking the authors author oh it's showing the figure but i need to show the author figure so i'm going to say author fig and update it always rerun Ha, huh, all right, now it's showing the right thing. Okay, so that was it actually. Next step would be deploying your application and you know, Streamlit has like a really straightforward way of deploying application. So what you do is you can simply sign into your Streamlit account and create a new app by uploading your, so by connecting your account with GitHub or you can deploy your application using Heroku they're both quite easy and we're not going to cover that in this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. You know, give SpecklePy and Streamlit a try and see how you can create your own workflow using SpecklePy. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.